Hey, how you doing, OG? Hey, what's up, man? Uh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, mm. Not Jesse. Uh, I'm Will today. I'm going to be doing your interview today. Uh, how's yeah. it? How, how's things going out there? Really good, man. I saw the uh, the skit you guys did um, <laughs> for the uh, kids. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they, they really just came up with it on the spot. Nice, nice. Nah, you guys are doing amazing stuff. Nah, things are good out here. I'm, I'm in Dublin, Ireland. So, all is good. Where are you based? Uh, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, okay. In Los Angeles, but now we're out here in Columbus. And it's pretty good. <laughs> How cold is it right now? Uh, I feel like it's like 30, 30 degrees, 39 degrees outside. Oh, yeah. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. Uh, yeah, Fahrenheit. Yeah, Fahrenheit, yeah, yeah. Um, gotcha. I know, I know uh, uh, you're from Nigeria, correct? Correct, yes. Oh, no, all right. Uh, how, how, how's things been out there? In Nigeria? Uh, I know you're probably in Dublin right now. But, uh, yeah, how's things in Dublin, Nigeria? Like, how's things going? Yeah, listen, in Dublin, things are cool. Like, you know, at the moment, of course, the main thing uh, is the whole pandemic situation, right? So, we're, we're in the lockdown right now. Hopefully, uh, beginning of December, it'll be lifted. Um, yeah, interesting times, you know, very interesting times. And getting on with it. And in Nigeria, on the other hand, of course, I'm not there physically, but uh, some very interesting things have also been happening there in the last month or so. I don't know if you heard about the NSARS movement. No. What's that? Yeah. It's um, like SARS is, is, is the full, it's, a, it's an acronym for the uh, Special uh, Armed Robbery Squad. It's a police squad. In, in so there's a movement against like um, ending that that squad right um, it's like a movement against police brutality um it's just interesting when you look at the the parallels with the u.s um, it's like like matter and stuff like that yeah Exactly, exactly. So, you know, but for, for Nigeria, it's very interesting. I, I, for Africa, a lot. Because, you know, one thing that it sort of, it, it was beyond just the police brutality, that movement. You know, because the police brutality has its roots in other things. Like just economic instability and like corruption in the government, which of course has its roots in other things that kind of go all the way back to colonization and all of that interesting stuff, you know. So, a lot going on in the world right now. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Uh, well, talking about like COVID and stuff going on right now, um, has it affected your music? Um, I know that you release. Uh, your EP uh, in October, uh, but that means that you must have been working on this during the pandemic. Has it affected it any kind of way? Um, of course, like in terms of like the release of the music, um, you know, for me, because I took a long break before I came back, I just decided to do music this year. So I think the, 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 the impact is more around the, the release because it would have been interesting to have um, the opportunity to connect with people one-on-one -on -one and do like a live show to launch the EP and just get interactions with people that way. So I'd say, you know, that's one piece that, you know, I wonder how it could have gone. And of course it would have been very different in terms of the rollout of the EP. Uh, in terms of making the music itself, I can't really say I was affected that much. Of course I was affected um, in terms of the process and what was going on. Uh, I can't say it really affected the content that much because uh, I had a pretty clear idea of what I wanted to do with the project. Um, and I just kind of, you know, I worked my way around the pandemic, let's say. You, you, you used it as a, a tool to just still kind of work on it. Like, it gave you time. Yeah. yeah. What happened was, I think before 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm recording around March, right? Uh, which was around the time the pandemic kicked off. Uh, yeah, and then there was this time where there was a lockdown. So I was a few tracks in because I was pretty consistent in terms of my recording. Um, and then I was a few tracks in and then there was a lockdown, which forced a break. So I just kind of took a break from writing. And then um, I think during that period, I wrote Mr. Marvelous. You know, one of the tracks on the, on the EP. I actually uh, really like that song. I was listening to it. Yeah. I was like, Mr. Marvel is the dope. I'm like, feeling this one. <laughs> Glad you like it, man. Yeah, so, yeah, like, that was kind of the experience. But I can't say it was there was any significant impact as a result of the pandemic. Uh, so your EP is Evolution by Any Means. Yeah. What does that mean to you? So I yeah, so for me, um, as a as an individual, like I believe that it, it only captures what I'm here to do, what I'm here to achieve yeah. um, in this lifetime, is to evolve, is to grow. Um, uh, for me, I have certain capabilities. I believe I have certain capabilities and certain potential, and it's all a journey about a journey of working towards this potential, and this potential is infinite, right? So um, the 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 um, the runway or the path that you could take in terms of growth is just endless, right? So uh, for me, it's about being intentional about that growth uh, and having a mindset that, okay, listen, I need to get better uh, than I was, um, you know, yesterday uh, and enjoying that whole process. So for me, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. I, I, I love that because since this whole pandemic, I felt nothing but drive to better myself. It's, it's, it's been a lot of like, you know, I don't, what, what's my excuse? What's stopping me from bettering myself? You know, taking time to look internally and externally, you know, instead of worrying about so much of my looks, but like my looks inside. And uh, that's how I got, ended up working for Ground Sounds because like it was, it was, a, it was a, attempt to do something better for myself, something that I wanted to do. And that's, it's been a blessing. Um, what start, what made you want to start music? Like when did you start and what drove you? Yeah, so for music, I suppose it's always been a part of my life, um, just growing up, not being around for you. Um, you know, back in Nigeria, we're heavily influenced by by the U.S. But even before that, just going to the parties, and then we got like you can just imagine the sort of music we have back in Africa, like you know, we all, all sorts of sounds. But there's some legends back there that just make amazing music. Um, and back then, you know, this, this is a genre called Juju, called Fuji. And you have people like King Sonny at day. These guys are just insane with music. And there's a certain vibe and the feeling that you get from their music. And of course, that just kind of grew with me. And it's something I've always enjoyed, just like anybody else. But in terms of when I actually got active, it was when I, I was in my teenage years. Um, you know, I started while I was in secondary school. We used to have prefix, and I, and I, and I was a social prefix. I used to organize the parties. Um, and we used to have these things where we would mime the songs. Like, and then I used to mime, I remember miming, like, Hit the Mark by Tupac. And, you know, like, and it was so intense. I specifically remember doing that performance and another guy in the crowd who was like, a friend of mine who I know, but is a real Biggie fan, you know, literally stood up and we got <laughs> each other's faces, like, you know, and so, uh, so the, there's all that, there's that phase. Uh, but then when I came to Dublin, uh, a friend of mine, while I was in school, we used to freestyle. Uh, and then I used to get like nice feedback from freestyling. Just like, you know, just be hanging out with friends and freestyling. And people like, man, you're nice, you should do this you know, and stuff like that. So I just built on that. Um, and then I linked up with a friend of mine called Chi, who's my part, uh, uh, my business partner today. Um, back then he was on the radio. So I linked up with him, got on the radio, with, started going on national radio, started doing like a regular show. Um, and then, you know, went on and like, um, you know, just formed a group and decided to 
because I used to really enjoy that reaction I got from people. So back then I was very into like the punchlines and the metaphors and all that funny stuff. So uh, for me, the artistry side of it, you know, enjoying the music, listening to people that really do it really well, and then wanting to um, explore how well I could do it myself. All right. So the people motivated you to keep on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the feedback was good. Um, you know, of course, when I look back now, I'm like, I wasn't that great back then. <laughs> but, but of course, you, you look back at your older self. Um, but yeah, the feedback was good. Um, but there was a time where I felt like, you know, I, I, sh I should just stop this because it wasn't kicking off. Like, ideally, I wanted it to. Uh, but then again, it's like I've come to a place where it's not, it's about, it's more about self-expression right now, right? It's like, for me, it's like I have a message um, you know, like I feel like a certain way of expressing myself and I have this capability inside of, inside of me that I have to use, right? Uh, put all of the success criteria aside, you know, um, that are determined by people out there in the world. But for me, it's like, it's just, I have this thing inside of me and I just need to get it out and I see a way that it can maybe help other people. But first it's about, okay, it's like almost this thing that's been planted inside of me and I know it and I have to do something with it or else it'll be a waste. Um, and then even now with the project, the feedback is, has been pretty, very positive so back, so far. So, you know, it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Oh yeah. I love it. Like, um, you brought up that you, uh, joined the uh, group, uh, Miller's. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Um, and is this your first uh, EP going solo? Correct. Yeah. Um, I, I had read that you had taken, taken some time away. Uh, how yeah. was that? How was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So listen, the last time I made music was around 2011. 11, okay. Almost 10 years, right? Um, so the break was, was great for me. It's like, uh, it was important for me to just go off. And I suppose I went off and just went and lived life and actually you know, got real life experiences. Um, I just you know, was very intentional about developing myself. I traveled the world. Uh, I went to the Middle East, you know, went to a lot of different places uh, and experienced life and just really evolved. I literally as a person uh, and I continue to do that so for me it just made sense uh, it was great for me to take that break and, um, and then just come back and it just felt natural and uh, for me because I went away from Dublin and just coming back to Dublin it's it's very easy for me to get sucked back into um, the music lifestyle because it's around me. You know. That's what you know. Uh, yes. When you were traveling, where do you love to go? What, what was your favorite place to go to? If you could go there again. <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, actually, my favorite place uh, in terms of trips uh, actually is, is Egypt, right? Um, I was in Egypt two years ago. Um, for me, I'm, I'm quite a spiritual person. I'm very into uh, history as well. So for me, going to Egypt, uh, going to see the pyramids, uh, going to see the Sphinx, uh, and all the temples out there, and just with all the context, you know, like you go to some of these places, and it, it, it kind of like wakes you up out of the slumber that you're in to say, listen, there's a lot more to the world that we're living in. You know, because you, it's it's insane, man. Like you go out there and it's like, so he's parent. There's no explanation. You know, like you go out. Uh, one of the temples there. I don't know if you, you're aware of this, but this is like at least five thousand years ago, and they've got like inscriptions of like helicopters in the ceiling, spaceships in the ceiling, like five thousand years ago, man. <laughs> you know, and even beyond everything you see, I mean, you see this massive blocks, right? These massive blocks, and you're like, back then, how were they able to, like, on top of one another, right? And like, how were they able to move these things back then? They didn't have pulleys, so they couldn't just, you know, 
put it on a little platform and just drag and like pull it around everywhere. They had to push that. You know what I mean? But that's, this is the thing. Where is that they had to push it? Maybe they didn't have to. But how do they push it? Maybe they didn't even do that physically. Yeah. You know? Maybe they gotta weigh at least a car, man. <laughs> What's that? I said those things are heavy. They gotta at least weigh like a car, like a car, man, a, a few cars, like each block. Yeah, you know, we're talking tons, man. Like each block weighs tons, and you have like hundreds of them on top of one another, like thousands that make up the temple. You know, so for me, that trip was just. It was magnificent, man. It was like, I mean, you know, it was like a spiritual trip for me. It was like a meditation trip. So that would be the place I'd pick out as my favorite place. Yeah. It sounds beautiful. I, I, I always wanted to go out there. Um, especially just how much history is still in there. Yeah, I gotta take advantage of that. Have you ever been to Africa? Yeah. I've actually never left the States before. Oh, okay. But, okay. I, I was actually planning on doing it this year, but then, and then, it happened. Oh, then I got locked down, stuck in Columbus, and here we are. <laughs> the States is massive, though, so listen, <laughs> there's a lot to explore. <laughs> Have you been here before? Yeah, man, a few times. I, I was in the I was in the U.S. this year in February. I was in Seattle. Yeah. I was in Vegas um, last year. I was in Vegas uh, the last two years. Did you get lucky at uh, any of the casinos? Nah, man, I, uh, <laughs> I don't think I, I was invested enough. I played one game two years ago. And I, nah, this is not for me. <laughs> I was like, ah, I lost. I don't want to do that again. Like, nobody likes to lose. <laughs> it could be fun, though. You just have to be careful. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I used to um, go to the casino every once in a while with some friends. And it, it's fun when you know how to win. Because mm. <laughs> all my friends were saying, like, oh, just go to the casino. Just go in there. Plan to have fun. And that's it. I'm like, no one loses and was like oh that was fun i just went and lost ten thousand dollars like yeah that's freaking amazing there is a certain like um rush you get right because you know there's all these chemical reactions that you're going through right you know the anticipation and whatnot so that in itself is a bit of fun so there's that rush that people go for as well but and there's a method to it you know this is the thing so for me i just didn't I didn't spend the time to really like get like my method to the game, so I was like, okay, I'm not gonna bother. <laughs> but there's the fun side of it. I, I shouldn't make it sound so serious. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Like that's why I enjoyed it, but I made sure that I was winning. I couldn't I couldn't just <laughs> I couldn't come in there and like whatever I came in there with, that was what I was willing to lose, which was like a hundred bucks. And I lost a hundred bucks and I was like, I'm done, I can't. I need, I need to think about what's din for dinner tonight or something. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, let's try to jump back into uh, music. Um, who, who would you say you draw your inspiration from? Musically, the truth is right now, for me, it's been really interesting to do this first project, right? Because uh, now it's like, okay, it's like I got that out of my system. Um, and now it's like, I'm listening to a lot of different artists. And I'm like, okay, I see kind of what they're doing more. And like, so a lot of the guys in the UK, like just today, for example, I was listening to this guy, Mo Stack. Um, I, you know, it's somebody I've always been aware of, but never really paid attention to. Uh, but so I'm listening to that, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Like, you know, and for me, it's like, for example, I've been thinking, okay, with the stuff I'm going to do in the future, I'd love to explore more melodies, for example, right? Uh, and, you know, this is something he does really well. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So it's like just observing that. Um, and then there's music that I enjoy, like from Nigeria, for example, the people like, you know, Wizkid, 
um, who released an album uh, a few weeks ago, I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, get a style from him or anything like that. But just the fact that the music is so good and it gives a certain feeling, like I suppose I get some sort of inspiration from that. Um, I, I, you know, for a long time though, I kind of took a break from just listening to people music-wise. Uh, for a long time, I was listening to a lot of classical music just to relax and, you know, because I just didn't want to hear any words. Um, but now I think, you know, I'm kind of paying attention more to just different artists. I just let, you know, whatever I hear, you know, inspire me either in a good way or know exactly what I'm never going to do. Um, you, you brought up that uh, the future of your music. Uh, what, what, what do you have plans for uh, for 2021 coming up? Yeah, you know, it's, it's really exciting for me because like, uh, I have um, so many ways I could go music wise because there's an Afrobeat side that I could explore as well which is really expressing myself in my natural language um, and a lot more melodious and you know just it's a different sound altogether um, from the instrumental piece um, so I I will be exploring that the Afrobeat side and then even when it comes to rap as well I um, intend to explore rapping in my native tongue more which is something I really used to enjoy um, uh, for me I think that is actually really close to the essence of what I am, because just that, you know, being able to express myself musically in my own natural tongue, I think has a certain depth to it, you know, and a different feel. So looking to explore that. And then, you know, like another thing is, you know, I did this project, like, you know, with a message to express myself. But I think going forward, um, I'm going to be a bit intentional about, you know what, let, let's go, let's go with the bars a little bit. Let, let, let me, you know, show off my capabilities a little bit. Because before it was about telling a story and all that kind of stuff. Yes, which I'll still keep. But, you know, I think I'm going to explore some showing off. Right? Oh, Show some new skills, which you like. I like it. This is interesting. So, when I came in today uh, for the interview, um, I tried. I tried to look up your name. How do you say your name? Because we were trying. We were trying to like uh, go over it. I was just like, I'm not sure I can say this correctly. So I want to be sure that uh, I get it correctly. Yeah, it's uh, it's Olusheg Mbadebo. Solution. Solution. For the boys and the girls. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Love. Because that that doesn't exist in the English language. It's GB is actually one one letter in, in my local dialect. In uh, can you give me like a phrase or something in that language? I got enough you can try if you want phrase. Bowdy. Bowdy? What does it mean? How's it going? How's it going? Nice. I'm gonna use that. Hold on, let me break that down. I'm gonna use that. So find your passion, bro, and get on your grind. Me, I got Perfect. a team, I got the motivate. Oh. Got a nation that I got to show the way. So, most nights I'm by how has uh, so you said that you were receiving some really positive uh, feedback about your um, EP. Uh, what's some things that uh, you were receiving? Like, uh, uh, what kind of love? Like, what's your favorite song on the EP? Mm, my favorite song. Um, I know the thing about the EP is I listened to it like because it was ready way before it was released in October. So for a long time, I was just enjoying it myself. You know, um, my favorite song, which has changed a few times. Yeah, I think it has to be between Balance and Mr. Marvelous. Uh, Mr. Marvelous, because it was the last song I released. Apart from the fact I just love the vibe in it. It's the last song I released, uh, that I recorded, sorry. Um, so I haven't listened to it as much, but I just, I just love the vibe in it. I'm doing a bit of singing on it. I, I just had so much fun recording that song. Same. Uh, Listening to it, I was just like, this, this is speaking, this is speaking to me. This is... This is exactly what 
we need to hear. Like, mm. you know, like as a, as a black man, sometimes you just need to acknowledge that you are amazing. You are mar- marvelous. You are so much bigger and better than than all everything else. Absolutely, like you know what you're saying, because you know. You think and then you are, you know. Whatever you think of yourself, that's what you are. You know, and it's such a simple thing, um, but you get it right. And again, it's like getting that balance right, right? Of okay, not being full of yourself, but just being confident. Because you need that belief in yourself. You know, when other people won't believe in you, you know, you have to believe in yourself. It's so, so important. And the truth is, you are amazing wherever you are, with all your faults and all your imperfections. But you have that voice in your head all the time, you know, that's uh, really like, you know, on your shoulder, like uh, telling you how, you know, imperfect you are, you know, but then you need to make that voice your friend. That's right. You know, understand its insecurity. And the thing is, I, I, I believe once you're able to get to that place where you love yourself and accept yourself, and realize how amazing you are and you're going to project that to the world you know and you're just going to be the same you know it's like the, the old saying love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love yourself you gotta love it's hard sometimes like like you said with with your how you think of yourself does reflect and like you know that insecurity it's all right to be insecure it's all right to be you know to, to look at yourself and see flaws because when you see the flaws then you can fix them then you can adjust to them make, make yourself better improve, improve yourself like what evolving like you've been saying like right i love that i love your energy man this is great <laughs> um so, uh, do you produce your own music? No, I do not. I don't make beats. Um, for, the, for this particular project, the bulk of it came from online, actually. Uh, there's a particular group, some guys called So Special. Uh, yeah, I found online, the Polish guys. And you know, you know, you see, you in listening to the instrumentals, you see it's a particular feel, there's just soulful feel to a lot of it. Um, and I just fell in love with that sound. Apart from one of the instrumentals, um, one of the other ones was made by a guy in the UK. So these are the guys. Um, and you know, production is something that I have thought about. And apart from the the guys that made the beat for this project, I also have to talk about the guy that engineered it. Um, and the guy that mastered it is a guy called Slick Bullet, who I featured on one of the songs, the new song. He was just uh, an amazing guy to, to, to work with throughout the project because uh, he contributed big time in terms of the engineering side of things. And then there was a guy in the UK uh, called New Machine who did the mastering of the instrumentals and the vocals. So, um, yeah, those are the guys I work with. So I work with. <laughs> Will you work with him again? Oh yeah, yeah, the guys, absolutely. Um, in terms of um, like the sound engineer, absolutely. Slick is my man, a new machine, they're great guys, absolutely. However, in terms of the sound, you know, who knows? I might, it depends on how I'm feeling. However, I do want to explore other sounds, um, you know, just to see what I'm able to create uh, with other sounds. Because again, the, the, the music is, determines a lot of the content and you know of course the the, the progressions and the flow and uh, on your delivery so I, i'd like to explore kind of other sounds going forward yeah. well i'm excited about that because um until about last week uh when uh jesse was just like hey you're gonna be interviewing og i was like all right send me any information that you have on this guy and i'll look into him and when I uh, pulled up on Spotify for Evolution by right, Neat, I started playing it and it was, I was like, I, I don't know if you t- would take it as a compliment, but J. Cole is one of my uh, favorite uh, rappers. And he's, a lyr- in my opinion, he's a lyricist. And I feel like you're you're just right there as well. Your words, 
speak. And I was like, this guy easily is a leader, man. Like, <laughs> I was like, you know, like, it, by what you were saying, like, what's going on over there is a lot of the same stuff that's happening here. And it's like, it's crazy how much it's, it's no matter where you go, mm -hmm. same stuff everywhere. It's, it's good to have people that see how it is and want to change it. Mm. It's like, I love that, I love that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that feedback, man. You know, again, it's just uh, trying to give a different perspective. <laughs> so I read a review of the EP today on Rap Review. And they, they called it um, Adult Contemporary. Um, yeah. so I'll take it. Adult <laughs> Contemporary. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and it's different, right? So uh, again, like, listen. For, for me, it's like you say, for, for you to give that feedback, you know, that, that, that make, means a lot. At least it's touching you in a certain way. And that's a lot of the feedback I've gotten. People can relate to it uh, and they find it kind of a bit of a breath of fresh air, something different, some inspiration. So it's great to get that feedback. And, uh, before I start trying to pack this all up, um, what, what kind of, what would you want your listeners to like take back from your music? I found the causes they were all indirect I whatever they need you know listen i can't like Never prescribe I'm, just, I'm not perfect myself you know and i'm just like expressing you. myself it's like sharing things, a few things i've learned telling my story hoping some people can relate to it hoping my people can grow from it um, i do think as humanity i think we all need to grow but then who am I? You know, I can't. That's one thing I know for sure. It's like well, I'm. I'm coming to terms with this whole concept of if you want to change the world, change yourself. All right. So for me, it's like I, I'm not here to preach or prescribe anything. Really, I'm just gonna be my best self, and hopefully, you know, you can get something great from it. I hope. I hope it, it helps. You know, that's you know. This is why I'm very intentional in terms of what I say. I wouldn't just say stuff just for the sake of it, because um, you know I want to be a positive influence. Showing the change, it's 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 man in the mirror with Michael Jackson. You gotta start with the one that you're looking at, like. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's the only one you can control, really. You know, well, <laughs> well, that's another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different range. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, yeah um, this has been awesome. Um, thank you for being, first of all, my first interview. <laughs> this has been a pleasure, um, especially like all this weekend. I've been listening to your song. Sounds like all right. I can't wait to actually talk to this guy. Um, Which was your favorite track, by the way? Uh, so I liked uh, Mr. Marvelous easily. Um, then there was. Um, uh, I swear, um, uh, that was I really like that one. Um, and uh, sing for them, the last song. Um, I was I was enjoying that. Who who was who was singing in that one? Yeah, it's a woman. What's that? Uh, what was her name? Nisha. Nisha. She had beautiful voice. <laughs> Amazing story behind that as well because uh, she's actually the daughter of uh, my business partner. I told you about. Really? So young. Yeah. Wow. I mean, she's so, it was so like it meant a lot to have her on this project. You know, I was there when she was born and everything. So it's just amazing to have her on that project and then singing on that particular song. You know, I mean, so much. So it's great to be with it. Exactly. It's amazing how like the world will just piece it all together. Like you know, like you said, you were there when she was born, and like you obviously like watched her grow up to be this woman to be like, hey, I need you on this song, and then she just killed it. I was, I was, I was sitting there like, okay. All right, where's she at? <laughs> like, 
What y'all doing? Go to love. Um, well, uh, before uh, we get off here, um, for a real quick sign off, um, could you give us a, hey, this is OG the story and you're watching Brown Sounds. Hey, this is OG the story and you're watching Brown Sounds. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for sitting here and talking to me. Um, I hope everything is okay out there and things are looking beautiful for your career. Like, I'm, you, you have a new listener. You have a new follower. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll be play, paying close attention and I hope you have a good day. Appreciate it, my brother. I really appreciate it. I thank you for your time.